Hi, I'm Ben Mankiewicz, and you're watching Turner Classic Movies and more of tonight's tribute to an actor who came to define on-screen masculinity and rugged charm during the 1960s, 70s, and into the 80s and 90s, Sean Connery. He died last month in his sleep in the Bahamas where he lived. He was 90 years old. We began tonight with two of the seven movies where Connery played British spy James Bond, his most famous character, and arguably the most famous movie character of all time. Certainly hard to keep Bond out of the top five. I mean, 58 years after Connery introduced Bond to movie audiences in 1962, we are awaiting the 25th picture in the official Bond series with Daniel Craig as 007, scheduled for release in April of 2021. And Bond's hold on popular culture is in no small part due to the legacy left by Sean Connery. But as I've pointed out throughout the night, Connery was weary of being typecast as Bond. That's a large reason why he first walked away from the character after five movies. Prior to that, he managed to make other films when he wasn't in production on a Bond movie. Up next, two of those pictures. First from 1964, Alfred Hitchcock directs Connery and Tippi Hedren in Marnie. It's easier to understand Connery's insistence on breaking free of the hold James Bond had over his career when you hear the words of Terrence Young, who directed Connery in three Bond films, including Dr. No, the first in the series. He doesn't give a damn for the ancillary assets of being a star, said Young, but a star he was. Bond producers Albert Covey Broccoli and Harry Saltzman cast him as Bond without an audition. He'd done some stage work in London's West End and had made a few movies, including a starring role in a boxing film for the BBC called Blood Money. It was an adaptation of the American Playhouse 90 TV production of Requiem for a Heavyweight, which starred Jack Palance. Palance was set to come to London to make the British version, but he backed out. And in came Sean Connery. Once the first two Bond films, Dr. No and From Russia with Love, became huge hits, Connery saw a future where he'd play spies and action heroes all his life, and he didn't like the looks of it. So when he expressed a desire to work with Alfred Hitchcock, Broccoli and Saltzman made the deal happen. Hitchcock's preparation for movie making is second to none, Connery said. In terms of what he wanted in the script, he'd visualize everything. I honestly enjoyed working with him. And regarding that script, Connery did something even Cary Grant wouldn't do with Hitchcock. I'll love that story after the movie. Marnie is a dark dive into sexual desire, repressed trauma, and assault. And there is one scene in particular that is difficult to watch. And though it wasn't seen this way at the time, many film scholars and Hitchcock fans now consider Marnie one of Hitch's best films. And much of its power must be credited to Tippi Hedren, though it's just her second starring performance. Critic Richard Brody calls it one of the greatest in the history of cinema. From Universal in 1964, also with Diane Baker and in a small but critical role, Bruce Dern, this is Marnie. After a couple of James Bond movies, Sean Connery sought to amend his contract with Eon Productions, which limited Connery to the Bond movies and other films for Eon. He feared being typecast in spy movies and adventures. Albert Cubby Broccoli and Harry Saltzman, who ran Eon, knew keeping Connery happy was a priority, so they amended the contract. And when Alfred Hitchcock expressed an interest in Connery and Connery and Hitchcock, they amended the deal to allow Marty to happen. And then Connery did something Hitchcock rarely experienced. Rather than just say yes to Hitch, the most important movie director in the world, Connery asked to see the script. That made Hitchcock's agents uncomfortable. They told Connery, even Cary Grant, doesn't ask to see the scripts. Connery's response was pure James Bond. Well, he said, I'm not Cary Grant. The line jives with how Connery viewed acting. He wanted it to be his job. He did not want it to define his life. I'm an actor, he once said. It's not brain surgery. If I do my job right, people won't ask for their money back. Coming up, a great Connery film that, like Marnie, he made during the height of his Bond fame. Connery plays a proud British Army officer sentenced to a brutal military prison for assaulting a superior officer. Directed by Sidney Lumet, it's a tense and gritty drama, nothing like a Bond picture, with the exception of your inability to take your eyes off Sean Connery. From 1965, The Hill is next. 